Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new travel slash landscape photography vlog. Here we are at Zor Valley, a new place for the vlog. Not new to me. I've been here two times already, but this is my first time ever being here for sunrise and obviously my first time ever filming a vlog for this particular location. And uh, we are here at the confluence. I believe this uh, rock feature here uh, to my left is called the Pyramid. Some people also call it the Indian Head. It's got a lot of different names for it. Really iconic spot in this particular area. And uh, I'll show you guys some B-roll of it and uh, maybe a photo or two. Well, I think one photo in particular that I got the last time I was here doing some scouting. And uh, it was during sunset. And it was a really cool black and white shot, nice detail shot, which we actually might be doing more of that this morning. Uh, funny enough, because the My Sunset app, which has been pretty spot on, uh, pretty much the entire time I've been using that app for the past maybe six months or so, I want to say. And uh, today was predicting a really high uh, percentage chance of, you know, a really good sunrise. You know, lots of colors in the skies. And uh, I thought it'd be a great idea to come here to shoot sunrise over this sort of uh, cliff face, this gorge wall. And uh, when I got here, I was very disappointed to see that there was pretty much no clouds in the sky whatsoever. Uh, completely bamboozled uh, by all weather apps that I, uh, you know, regularly trust, but obviously they're not always gonna be right. Uh, a little disappointing. So I had set up, you know, a shot facing this way towards the, uh, the gorge wall here at the confluence and uh, just really wasn't liking it. In fact, what I was liking was looking down uh, the creek this way because there was still some sort of soft pinkish orange colors and some very distant clouds over there. And uh, there's actually some ice that is formed right on the edge of the creek here that wasn't here the last time I was here. And uh, I figured it'd make for a nice leading line off into the distance here. We got the gorge wall, uh, some sycamore trees, which do kind of stand out uh, with their bright white bark down towards the end of the creek, at least for what we can see from this particular angle. And uh, also did a focus stack too, and I brought the polarizer. The 24 to 70 is on the camera um, because I, I knew I would be down close to the water and uh, what better way to reveal details underneath the shallow water than using a polarizer. And uh, obviously, like I said, pairing that with a focus stack to get the details of the pebbles, the rocks, some bigger rocks along the shore, and uh, the ice that is sort of just right here in a very thin line along the creek. Uh, but right now I'm kind of lost on what to do exactly. I was really expecting an incredible sunrise over the, uh, the pyramid here. But we did not get that and i don't really have the greatest of cell service i do have cell service but it's just not that strong uh, at least not strong enough for this app to refresh its forecast and uh, i might check the uh, ar on photo pills to see uh, at what point the sun might peak up over this although i'm not super hopeful that's going to be anytime soon just because of the time of the year. Uh, yeah, it's rough, it's rough. But hey, we're gonna make it work. The 24 to 70 might need to come off uh, and the 24 to 200 might go back on because detail shots might just be the name of the game again. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna take a few more shots here of just the composition that I have and uh, I'll update you guys when we find something new. Okay, so moving on from sort of our main shot, I said I was gonna focus on some detail stuff. And uh, surprisingly, the last time I was here, 
I ended up getting two detail shots that I really, really liked. The one you guys already saw, but this is another one. I titled it Clarity, just because the water had such a clear look to it, especially just the feeling in the moment, uh, being along a nice creek like this on a crisp winter day, just felt like the right title. But as you can see, you know, I think it just has a lot going for it. There's a lot of really nice texture, shape, uh, lines and colors and depth to it. And uh, it kind of inspired me to want to do more stuff like that. And uh, that's nice because you don't really have to rely on, you know, having a really great sunset to get a cool shot like that, you know? So they're more like accessible, I guess. And what I see right here is, like I was talking about earlier, the ice that was along the line of the uh, this rocky, you know, shore here, right up against the creek. And it's got some really nice patterns in it, these sort of like little divots. And they look like little circles uh, where the ice gets a little bit thinner. And you can still see some of the rocks beneath the ice here. And uh, I'll cut to some B-roll to show you guys exactly what I'm looking at. I'm thinking about doing just a simple top-down shot. And I'm going to take it from a couple different points. You know, I don't want to just sit here and shoot this one spot because maybe down there there's a cooler pattern. Uh, you know, maybe back there there's a cooler pattern, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm going to try to take some of, you know, the sort of rougher ice mixed in with the smoother ice, just the smoother ice, and maybe a combination of the smooth ice transitioning into the water itself. Just kind of get a whole mixed bag of things, if you will. So. I'm keeping the 24 to 70 on. Uh, I'm gonna keep the polarizer on. Uh, the camera's pointing like directly down at something. The polarizer isn't gonna really do too much. So I'm not worried about taking it off. I'm not worried about causing any issues. And uh, I don't wanna take my gloves off really because it is cold. It's like 28 degrees or something. So yeah, that's kind of the, uh, the game plan right now. That's what we're gonna do. And uh, yeah, I'll try to talk you guys through the settings and everything while we take the shots. All right, so I've decided to abandon the tripod for this, mainly because I think it's going to be a little awkward to get my camera pointing directly down over top of this. So we're going to go handheld. Also, the bottom uh, extending pieces have frozen because I put them in the creek, and uh, they will not, uh, you know, extend. So yeah, no big deal. We're just going to go handheld here. And uh, my settings right now, obviously, we're in aperture priority mode. Don't need to be in manual. Um, and uh, I'm just going to get kind of directly over this, maybe get a little closer actually, and uh, use the uh, tilting screen here to my advantage. I'm going to focus in directly in on this. Now I'm at ISO 200 F8 and it's giving me 1 over 10 seconds, which uh, with the way my hands are right now being supported by my legs, you know, we're probably not going to get any motion at all with the internal stabilization that this camera has. But uh, just to be safe, I'm probably going to crank it up to about ISO 800. And I'm going to move a little closer here. There's this really nice rock here, and I would like to place that with some purpose in the frame. And I really only want, I don't want any of the creek bed, so I'm going to keep that out of the top of the frame. And just going to go ahead and check it and make sure that it looks sharp, and it does. And honestly, the closer uh, I get, really the better it looks. So I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit and get this rock out of the frame and get just icy texture. That's what I'm going to try and do. And we'll have to see how that looks, you know, edge to edge sharpness wise, because we are really close uh, to our subject. And I'm actually going to try going to like f5.6, maybe f4, which will allow me to lower my ISO to, let's see here, one, or uh, ISO 320, give me 1 over 60. So I'm going to position the camera here a little bit better. I'm going to go back to get the rock in frame here at f4. Just taking a couple shots each time. I don't know why, I just kind of have a habit of doing that. All right, so I think those I'm pretty happy with. I'm not sure which one I'll end up liking more. 
So I'm gonna move down a little bit here, see if I can find something else, a little bit uh, different than what we've been shooting, a little bit more interesting. Maybe this here. So again, I'm at F4, ISO 320, give me one over 50. Which being at 35 millimeters should be plenty fast enough. One thing I'm also noticing as I'm sitting here is there are some sort of like, I don't know if you really want to call them waves, but little lapping water textures that are kind of coming in uh, every so often right at the very top of my frame. And I'm trying to kind of capture them as they come in just to see if it'll make for anything interesting. Otherwise, I'm just gonna take a few more of just the ice. Again, checking to make sure everything's tack sharp throughout. Don't want to mess that up. And I think I am set, although I might want to get this right here. And the closer I get to the ice, it's giving me a higher shutter speed, about 1 over 100, which works really well. And just going to do another one here, kind of uh, separating the frame into two, uh, where we have, you know, the ice kind of leading up to the sandy, you know, rocky creek bed at sort of like the top third of the frame, just to kind of create a little uh, separation. I think that's going to do it for shooting the ice here along the creek. Now, which one of these am I going to like the most? I'm not sure right off the bat, but... I can tell you I am kind of leaning towards the photos that have just ice texture. Uh, I want to take some with the creek just to have something different in case I might like it better later on. But I think as of right now, yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards the ones that just have the ice texture because it has those really nice repeating patterns. And I think it's just going to look really crispy, especially with a little bit of sharpening and the right crop. Now. For photos like that, much like the detail shot I shared with you guys of the rapids, I think those photos really benefit in most cases either from like a square crop or like a, a thinner rectangular crop. I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure if that, you know, makes the photo a little bit easier on the eyes, you know, makes it a little bit easier to tell your eyes where to focus, you know, removing distractions. I'm not sure, but you know, I think with photos like that, if you're having a hard time with really liking them, I would try experimenting with a crop, maybe a two to one crop or a uh, one by one crop, you know, with a, a square. And I think maybe you'll uh, maybe change your mind on that if you're not really liking it, right? Don't forget that you can crop. So I am starting to see some light kind of creep up on these trees here in this distant hill line and down there. I don't know if you guys can see it but uh, maybe in a little bit we'll get a, a decent amount of light showing up here, down here in the gorge. I'm not sure though. Uh, I did check the AR and it said the sun isn't gonna peak over till about 10 o'clock. And uh, that is roughly about two hours from now. And I don't know if I uh, have the energy to stay here that long uh, with the amount of sleep that I got. So I'm gonna walk around and try to find some different compositions. I think there's one that I want to try. I'm not hopeful for it to work, but I just kind of want to see it from the perspective that I, I'd want to shoot it at. So we're going to go take a look at that. So admittedly, I ended up taking a few more sort of uh, abstracts, if you will, of some more ice texture a bit further down. And uh, we actually had some like different patterns. That's why I wanted to stop and like grab them. So I'll show you guys those two photos really quickly. But uh, 
Before I move on to the next shot, which involves us getting sort of back onto the bank here and shooting down uh, into the creek bed, we do need to change lenses. And uh, normally, on a day like today, I'd probably come already equipped with the 24 to 70 or the 24 to 200 on. But I had planned on, you know, doing this shoot with the polarizer, which means I have to use this lens, the 24 to 70. But uh, yeah, I want to be able to go in a little bit farther now. So we are going to make a lens change. So I'm going to pop this polarizer off and uh, pop on the 24 to 200. Then we will move on to our next composition, if you will. Now, if there's one thing I dislike doing in the field, that's changing lenses. So I really quickly tell you guys how I change lenses in the field. I'm sure you guys probably have your own methods, but I get the other lens out. I get the, uh, the rear element cap loosened all the way. Uh, then I kind of position the camera like this so stuff can't like fall into the sensor. Then I undo it and then swap this over to this and then just quickly snap that on just like that. Quick and painless. Uh, the less you can, you know, leave your sensor exposed, the better, obviously. I mean, cleaning the sensor really isn't that big of a deal at the end of the day. It's just kind of, you know, a pain, right? Not something many people want to spend time doing, even though it really doesn't take that much time. But, you know, you know what I mean. I'm going to throw this uh, lens hood on here. I probably could have put my other lens hood on for the other lens, but... Just kind of forgot about it and I'm going to go ahead and quickly dust off the lens there. I don't really think there's anything on it, but uh, you know, can never be too, uh, too safe with that, right? Although I don't think a, a piece of dust on my lens has ever come close to ruining a shot. <laughs> but who's to say that I can't, right? But yeah, uh, starting to see a lot more light hitting trees, especially back there. So the sun is obviously getting a little higher in the sky. So like I said, couldn't be a better time to put the 24 to 200 on. So we're going to move up to our next little composition and I'll show you guys kind of what I had in mind. Okay, so this is the angle that I was talking about. Let me uh, get over on this side here so that maybe you guys can see it a little bit better. But what mainly caught my eye was there is what appears to be a red oak, a northern red oak here, kind of cliff hanging. And that isn't necessarily what caught my eye. What caught my eye was the leaves, right? The uh, marcescent leaves that stay on the tree until the spring instead of being dropped in the fall. And they always just have a really nice standout look to them. And, you know, I saw them hanging over sort of the, uh, you know, the shore down there, if you want to call it that. And I figured if I could get a window up above, I could maybe shoot down at the leaves and focus in on them, you know, kind of blur the background and maybe like F4 or F5, 6 as much as I can. And use the nice sort of like cyan you know, aquamarine color of the creek behind it as a really nice backdrop to create sort of like a, I don't know, uh, a kind of a minimalistic photo, if you will. Now, I've seen other people do shots like this. One in particular, again, another big inspiration of mine is uh, Peter Lick. I've seen him take photos like this. So I kind of want to try and attempt something like it for myself. I've really never had the opportunity to be able to actually do a shot like that. And uh, I think this is probably the best opportunity. Now, I will say that if this tree here uh, to my left sticks around until the fall, uh, I think we'll have, honestly, a better chance at a composition like that with this tree here because 
this branch is in a much nicer position and especially the way that it's kind of shaped and how it arcs it's perfectly backdrop by the creek the only problem is at that time of the year you know the creek bed as i've seen in other photos can almost nearly dry up where you won't have this much flow uh, maybe it'll have to work in the summertime if we get lots of rain during the summer maybe it'll charge the creek enough to be able to completely set a backdrop of just water for the leaves over the creek so i'm going to try to take sort of like the winter time version of it see how it looks maybe if there was a little bit more leaves in the branches i'd like it a little bit better but yeah i don't know we're just going to take a shot and probably have to get a little lower to the ground uh, to get, you know, the farther back creek as like the backdrop. Because right now as I'm standing up here, it looks a little too close to the shoreline. So I think if I get lower, you know, it kind of gets farther back into, uh, you know, the backdrop, I guess, if you will. So we're going to set up for that. And again, you can now see kind of why I wanted the 24 to 200 on because I wasn't sure exactly if 70 was going to be enough reach. All right, so I've got the shot framed up here the best that I can. And uh, I kind of was hoping this wouldn't happen because it seemed pretty calm up until now anyways. And I guess it makes sense now that the sun has been up for a little bit, temperature change, et cetera, et cetera. There is a little wind and some of the few remaining leaves on these branches are deciding to move, which is a little unfortunate because I think the shot would really benefit from, like I said, a smooth water in the background. Um, but right now I'm at ISO 64, uh, F63, because that's the lowest I can go uh, with this lens at this range. And unfortunately, I don't think this shot is going to work today. It is just a good idea, though, to try it, attempt it, see what it looks like, right? Because I very easily could have from down there been like, eh, it's not going to work. And then, you know, maybe it could have worked, right? I only would have known had I come up here and tried to actually attempt it. I think what will be more promising in the future is waiting for this tree again over here that I showed you guys earlier in some B-roll, um, you know, to get its leaves back. If it will get its leaves back, hopefully it will. Um, and hopefully it doesn't um, fall off the side of this cliff because it probably won't be long before that happens just because of erosion and stuff like that. But hopefully it can at least hang around, no pun intended, until the, the, the coming fall this year. Because I think that potentially will be the best time to shoot it. It's a relatively open, you know, viewpoint here. And I think it could be promising, just not right now. I would need like an ND filter uh, to shoot this branch here as is. And that would require maybe at least a couple second exposure and those leaves are going to be moving regardless. So we'll probably just have to come back and try another day. So essentially after getting ready to kind of get out of here, I stumbled across a few trees here actually along this other branch of the creek, maybe just a hundred feet or so from where we were. And uh, I think we have another opportunity potentially at the sort of, uh, you know, branch over the creek shot because these ones are angled a little bit differently. We also have some white water as a backdrop as well, just down there. And I think that honestly makes it a little bit more interesting to have as a backdrop. And it kind of branches all around the white water, just like the branches that we're shooting. So I'm gonna try to take a few handheld shots of some of these branches here. and just see what they look like. If 
framed up. Now my settings now are ISO 640, F63, and it's metering about 1 over 200, which is perfect because I'm at like 198 millimeters on this lens. And right here looks, I think, the most promising just because there's the most going on in the water. And it's at a point where sort of two different branches from two different trees kind of come together and almost touch. I think, if anything, it will need to be cropped if I do decide to use it. But I'm still thinking that even these trees would probably look a lot better at a different point in the year when they have more leaves on them. Because right now the angle is good, it's just there isn't enough leaves for my liking. I think that's the issue. So currently it is about quarter after nine in the morning and I think I got here around maybe 6.45 or so. So kind of coming up on being here for about three hours and it's kind of crazy to say that because it doesn't feel like I've been here for three hours. It feels like I've been here for like 20 minutes if I'm being completely honest. But I think I am going to call it on the outing here uh, for a couple reasons. First and foremost, the sun is completely MIA. The golden light that I was seeing on various, you know, distant tree lines and hills and gorge walls, etc., has completely vanished, and we are now left with the textbook definition of flat lighting. While there are still shots that, of course, can be had in those conditions, right now I'm kind of feeling a little uninspired and uh, not really seeing anything that's catching my eye at this current point. And, you know, that's just kind of how some of these outings go, right? Not every single photography outing is going to be banger after banger after banger, kind of like what we had in the last one when we went to Letchworth, right? You know, those types of outings are few and far between. So uh, don't, don't get too discouraged if every outing you go on, you're not having something like that happening where you're walking away with 10, 15 plus, you know, portfolio level even images, right? You got to learn to lower your expectations when you come into shoots and that is something I admittedly struggle with because today for a perfect example I kind of expected there to be a really fantastic sunrise with some great color in the clouds and we got the complete opposite of that. It was completely crystal clear blue skies which uh, kind of put me on the back foot admittedly when I first got here I was like kind of scrambling I was like well what do I shoot now right? And luckily I found a, a decent alternative B angle, but beyond that, you know, I really had to stop and think and walk around and look and be like, what do I want to shoot? Because I knew there were some things I wanted to take photos of. It's just a matter of how to go about doing it on a day like today, right? And the ice patterns is a perfect example of something that, uh, you know, not only me, but anyone can do on a day like today where there really isn't so much interest in the big wide angle vistas and instead you have to focus you know closely on things like that pattern shape and texture right uh, that's some great advice that i've gotten in the past that says when you know the big wide angle stuff again isn't working the best thing to do is just to focus in on pattern shape and texture and that's what we did luckily we had that nice strip of ice right, to kind of, I guess, make up for the lack of a great sunrise. And uh, that kind of worked out really well. And honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if that's my favorite shot that I got from today, despite everything that's around me, right? Amazing trees, steeped gorge walls, all this amazing stuff. The patterns of the ice texture along the creek is my favorite thing, right? I wouldn't be shocked if that ends up being the case because when I was here the other day, you know, clear skies, nothing super crazy. A close-up shot of the rapids ended up being not only my favorite shot I took that day, but is honestly up there is one of my favorite shots I've taken recently. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just goes to show 
that sometimes there is much more to be found, you know, when you go to zoom in and kind of focus in on smaller details, right? But again, not every photography outing is going to be a fantastic one. Some days you'll have days like this, and it is what it is. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the, the vlog. Hope you enjoyed the photos along the way. And I'm not sure what the next adventure will be, but wherever it is, hopefully you guys will join me then. And uh, we'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. I am not looking forward to this hike back, I'll tell you that much.